Welcome to this Airbus A321 FMGC setup video. In this tutorial I will be using a flight plan, you can get one from a free online tool called Simbrief. I will be going from Stockholm Arlanda to Copenhagen Karstrup. The Airbus FMGC setup commonly follows an acronym called DIFSHRIP. This shows the order in which to do the pages in the MCDU. The setup begins on the data page. If the aircraft is not already on this page, it can be accessed by pressing data and then aircraft status. On this page it is important to check the correct aircraft type, correct engines, and make sure the database is in date. Next we will move on to the init, a page by pressing init. Here we will start with the, from, to box. Here you will enter the ICAO identifier of the airport you will depart from and then the destination airport. I will enter Echo Sierra Sierra Alpha then a slash then Echo Kilo Charlie Hotel. This shows that I will be going from Stockholm Arlanda to Copenhagen Karstrup. As you enter this information it will appear in the scratch pad at the bottom of the screen, it is then loaded by pressing the line select key next to the boxes. Next I will enter the alternate airport, Marmo Echo Sierra Mike Sierra. Then I will put it into the alternate field. This isn't always required as not all flights require an alternate. Blue text shows fields which aren't mandatory whereas orange boxes show mandatory information that must be entered. It is then possible to enter a flight number. I will now look on the flight plan that I generated on Simbrief to find the cost index and cruising altitude. I will then enter this information into the MCDU. Entering the cruise level will automatically populate the temperature box, this can also be entered by using the value from the flight plan. The starting latitude and longitude of the aircraft is automatically populated, the Align IRS button can be pressed. This concludes the init, A setup. Next we will set up the flight plan. I will check the flight plan to find the departure runway and standard instrument departure that we will be following. We will be departing on runway 19 right on the peaked 1 Gulf departure. To enter this information press the line select key next to the departure airport. Then press departure. This will show the available departure runways, here we need to scroll down by pressing the up arrow. Then select runway 19 right. After pressing this, the available standard instrument departures appear. Again we need to scroll and select the peaked 1 Gulf. After this we can press no transition and then insert. We will now again consult the flight plan for the route. November 872 is an airway which then goes the waypoint earn of. To enter this we will press the line select key next to the final waypoint in the departure which is P2. A new menu will appear, here you need to select airways. In the VIA field we need to put the airway November 872. After that put the waypoint Ernov in the 2 field. More airways can be entered here if needed but we need to press insert. Now the only remaining part of the route to be entered is the approach and the arrival. I'm going to enter the Ernov 2 Charlie arrival with an ILS approach for runway 22 right. On the flight plan page I will press the line select key next to my destination. On the next page I will press arrival. I will press the up arrow to then select runway 22 right. Then select earn of 2 Charlie as the arrival. Then I will enter no via and no transition. Once this is done I can press insert. This concludes the flight plan setup. 
the next stage in the process is to go to the secondary flight plan. Here you would typically start by copying the active flight plan. The secondary flight plan can have multiple purposes such as anticipating runway changes, entering engine out departures and being ready for a return to the departure airport. Next is the radio nav page. The Airbus tunes various radio aids based on the flight plan route. It is possible to enter VORs with radials and also tune NDBs for the departure but in this case, we don't need to enter anything in the radio nav page. After the radio nav page we will move on to the init B page, which can be accessed by pressing init and then one of the sideways arrows. The purpose of the init B page is for fuel predictions. We will now set the mass and balance of the aircraft. This is done through the Tolis ISCS screen. You can open this by hovering at the top of the screen to open the top bar, then press plug INS, Tolis, and then open ISCS screen. Then go to the Loading Performance tab. I will go back to the first page in the operational flight plan. Using the ISCS I will make the zero fuel weight of the aircraft match the flight plan which is 69.9 tons. Then I press apply these load settings. After this I will enter the block fuel which is 6.1 tons. After this press either quick or slow refueling. I will now fill out the init B page. First I will enter the zero fuel weight of 69.9 tons, then a slash. Then using the Tolis ISCS I will find the zero fuel weight center of gravity of 26.9% and enter this after the slash. Then after entering the block fuel of 6.1 tons, the fuel predictions will become available. Now, finally, we will complete the performance. In the ISCS I will choose flap 2, as the speeds for flap 1 plus F are rather high. In the MCDU, I will enter the flap setting and then the setting for the trimmable horizontal stabilizer which is up, 0.4. The flex temperature is 49 degrees. After this I will enter the V-speeds from the ISCS in the left-hand side of the MCDU. In a typical flight setup the pilot flying will have the performance page open and the pilot monitoring will have the flight plan page open. The flight plan can be checked by having the flight plan page open on the MCDU and then using the switch to change to plan view. Then the up arrow can be used on the MCDU to scroll through the route on the navigation display. The pre-departure FMGC setup is now complete. If you like this video, like and subscribe.